Hello and welcome to another Android based tutorial. Today we're going to talk about using Logcat to debug your BuzzTouch applications. Uh, I will say from the beginning that this tutorial is BuzzTouch focused and if you want to create your own project to be able to follow along on this tutorial you can go to buzztouch.com, sign up, create a simple project, download the project files and you'll be on your way. Uh, today we are going to look at doing uh, Logcat using Android Studio. And the reason I chose Android Studio instead of Eclipse is because it's the new method that Google wants us to use to develop Android apps. And eventually BuzzTouch uh, apps are going to be focused and built uh, using Android Studio as well, so we might as well get used to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I've already fired up Android Studio and uh, loaded my practice project. Uh, it's not really a practice project, it's where I kind of go to test out new features and stuff. So it's already been loaded according to an uh, earlier tutorial that I did. You can find that on my YouTube page. Um, but we're going to go ahead and run this in a moment and then use Logcat to kind of take a look at what's going on. And you'll find that it'll be very useful for debugging and for providing information to the forum when you have a problem. Uh, one of the things that I think you should do first off though is go ahead and set up the error message console so that you can see what's going on when the uh, app loads and to do that you can go up to view and tool windows and then event log and that's going to bring up this little box here and it kind of shows you what's going on you know while the thing is uh, is loading so you can go ahead and minimize that if you want and it'll be down here if you need it again next thing you want to do is go ahead and configure the um, app for when it runs to um, go ahead and launch Logcat, Logcat automatically. So if you click here up on App and do Edit Configurations, it'll bring up this box. And again, it shows App here. And I'm not sure why it shows it App as opposed to the name of the app, which would be Playtime. But it does show here the module is Playtime, so that's good for us. Um, so I think all these are the defaults. You can go ahead and use those as they are. Um, emulator, you can you know, do some options here as well. And then Logcat is what we want. So you want to go ahead and do clear log before launch if that's what you'd like. Now make sure that the logs are clear and there's nothing from previous runs in there. And then show Logcat automatically. So it'll launch Logcat when the app launches as well. And then you can also filter to only show out from this application, which is, is kind of good. Um, but you may need more data at some point, so you can uncheck that if you'd like. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And then let's just go ahead and run our app now. Um, I already have a emulator configured, so it should prompt us. Right, so it prompts us if we had a running device, we could pick that, and I'm actually going to show that in a few minutes. Or you can choose the emulator that you want. I have multiple emulators configured here, but I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. Um, and you can use, check this, use the same device for future launchers. So we'll go ahead and uncheck that just in case I want to change things. And we'll hit OK. And so now it's kind of showing you what's going on here. Um, and it will take a few moments for the emulator to. Uh, but surprisingly, it actually takes less time, I think, now for the emulator to launch than it did with the Eclipse ADT bundle. And that's actually kind of nice because that would take forever sometimes if it even launched. And you'd be waiting and waiting and waiting and you're never quite sure what's happening. So. This does seem to be a little bit faster, even though it is still kind of slow. So we'll give this a few moments to launch. And uh, once it does, uh, we'll come back and show you what's going on. OK, so the emulator has launched. And it's actually still doing some stuff in the background. It's uploading the app and installing it and things of that nature. We'll go ahead and unlock it. Um, so I'm going to go away from that for a second. And at some point, when the app gets to a better launch phase, so this is going to tell you what's going on. Um, so it's waiting for the device to come online, waiting for it to start up. The device is ready. Um, it notices that the target device is this. And then it goes ahead and starts uploading the APK file. And all right, so it's gone ahead and it's launched. And if we go, the emulator. I'll see that it's loading. 
So that's kind of what it looks like. I said, you know, it's just a little test app. But this is the logcat um, output, and this is extremely helpful for figuring out what's going on with your app. And remember that we've set this to filter on only the things that are attached to this app. So we may actually be losing some information that we want, but you know, there's a lot of good stuff here that will help you with your debugging, um, in which you can share in the forums to help other people debug your stuff. So it tells you tons and tons of stuff. It tells you exactly what's you know going on. BuzzTouch has done a really good job of you know putting debug output here so that you know exactly what's going on and all the you know parameters and everything that are are being initiated. So it tells you exactly what's going on. You know it's it's loading. It's doing an on create and on view. Um, tells you you know the device has a screen size of whatever so it's kind of important to know for creating your images and things so this is a, considered a small device tells you what the orientation is uh, tells you that it's loading the btconfig.txt file which is the file that you know keeps everything about your app in it um, it says right here that the config file does use a data URL for remote updates and tells you it does not exist in the cache at the moment so it's going to be using the BT config text that's included in the project and once it goes ahead and gets it from online it will put it in cache and then it'll check it the next time it launches against the version that's online and see if it needs to be downloaded again so continuing on tells you that this app does not use the splash screen that could be helpful um, starting the main activity um, it tells you that prompting for push notifications is off and starting GPS is set to no so it's not doing GPS on startup um, tells you that uh, there's a home screen and it's not using tabs so it's using home screen instead of tab screen and then this is where it starts telling you that all the different types of plugins that it's using and the item IDs. And so you can actually go into the config file and look up these item IDs and find out you know which screen menu that they're attached to. So we got like the home screen menu. Um, what else we got going on here? So it does talk about some of the same things. You know, we got the GPS thing. Uh, it tells you, you know, the output here tells you what, what the home screen or what the plugin is that you're looking at. So lots of good information there. It tells you the URL for the content and everything. So good stuff. So if you come back to the app that's in the emulator, and if you click on something, let's just say the uh, now let's go with the circular menu. So this is actually going to launch an HTML file that I have. And you'll notice that all kinds of stuff is getting written back there in Logcat. So you can just kind of go through this. It shows you what the simple message is. Um, this is a little error message for some reason. Ah, <laughs> interesting. Okay. So you guys caught me. I'm actually on the road doing some stuff and it's looking for the internet. So, yes, I am in Houston at the West East Hilton. Uh, so, that's why I wasn't able to go out there. So, let's see if there's an error message about that. Yes. So, it says it's trying to load the document, but because I'm behind the internet router thing or whatever the firewall that they got here, it actually hasn't got to this. URL so that I can log in and get my internet access again. So let me just take a couple moments to go ahead and do that so that we can continue on here. I'm going to pause this and I will come back. Okay, we're back. Uh, we've gone ahead and logged into the internet here at the hotel. I think it's kind of interesting that the hotel thinks that this is an actual device as opposed to it using the network connection that my MacBook is using, but whatever. So. If you click on some of these menu items, uh, like this one, it's actually going to go ahead and load a page that I've told it to load. And um, 
So right here you can see what the URL is for this particular page uh, to make sure that it's actually going out there and loading the thing that you think it's going to. So that's kind of cool, good debug stuff there. Uh, if you go back and if you pick a plugin that hasn't been downloaded, um, like this one, it's going to tell you there's a missing plugin, so you can come in here and take a look and see what's going on. So it's trying to do the CRR QR reader. Um, basically, it's getting an exception because that there isn't that plugin. So that's kind of where you get some of the debug data there. It tells you what's going on. Although the screen itself is actually telling you pretty good that the uh, item isn't there and needs to be included in your package when you download it and compile it. And um, email image, you know, tells you what's going on there. Tells you that it's loading it, gives you the JSON numbers and all that kind of stuff. Let's see what happens when you click it. Click the image. So show image options, tells you it's loading that. Um, so, you know, there you go. This uh, logcat data is incredibly helpful uh, for doing debugging stuff. Um, you can also, you know, copy and paste this stuff and post it. So you can do a copy and then, you know, you got your whatever your notepad of choice is and you can go ahead and paste it there, paste it into the buzz touch form so that people can see what's going on and help you debug. So, just easy as that. So that's kind of a very brief tour of Logcat in uh, Android Studio using the emulator. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and stop the emulator. And I'm going to hook up a device. So, uh, I'm not sure how to get rid of this window. But we'll go ahead and minimize that. So I have a device. It's already set up for debug mode, and in the comments for this video, I'll tell you how to set up for the debug mode. But I'm going to go ahead and hook it up here. Um, for Mac, you don't have to download any drivers or anything like that uh, because it automatically knows how to do it. You may have to install USB drivers or something if you're using a Windows box, and Linux may be even different. So you'll have to check that out. But let's go ahead and run our app now that we have. Uh, We have the uh, uh, actual device hooked up, so it should give us the option to select the device. Now, sometimes my device doesn't show up, so we will see. So I do have this running device, so we'll go ahead and hit that. So now, instead of running the device on the emulator that you can see here on the screen, it's going to be running it on the actual device. So you'll have to trust me that it's working. Um, I should be able to do a screenshot here. Alright, so it says that there's an existing package and it needs to get uninstalled first. So we'll go ahead and let it do that. Let's take a look at the event logs. So this is telling you that everything worked as expected. Alright, so I went ahead and um, uninstalled the old one and installed this new one. So basically you're getting the exact same stuff. Um, it's just writing on a, on a different device. So we have a connection type of Wi-Fi. So the device is running on Wi-Fi. Uh, screen size tells you what it is. It says it's a large device. And that's important to know where to put your images because uh, there's those different res drawable things. Um, for the bus touch applications anyways. And basically all the same stuff. So if I go ahead and click on a, so let me see if I can, oh, okay, I lost my device there for a second. Ah, okay, there we go. We're back. <clears throat> so let me see if I can get a picture of it. Approve. All right, so there you go. This is my device to actually show you that something is going on here. And if I click on the, uh, do the one that doesn't work again, the QR reader. So again, same information. If I go back, 
more information comes up. I pick another one. You know, different stuff comes up. So, exact same thing. All that you've done is you've hooked up your device to the, uh, you know, to, to Android Studio and you're getting the same output, but you can actually, you know, run this on the device, which is the preferable way to do any kind of debugging and app development. So that pretty much sums up uh, using Logcat um, Project Studio, or Android Studio rather. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and post them to the forum. If you have any constructive criticism, let me know. Uh, hopefully this will help you out in your debug efforts. And um, if you haven't gotten involved in BuzzTouch, head over to buzztouch.com, sign up, create a quick little app, and um, get to developing. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Good luck with your Android projects, and um, come back to this uh, channel for more videos in the future. Have a great evening.